What's going on folks? TCG back up again with another video. Today we are helping our good buddy Josh, who you've seen in other videos, shingle his chicken coop. So this is going to be a how-to video on how to shingle your chicken coop slash shed. Giant walleye. We put to get some birds. We're going to take some chance. I got Doyle behind the camera. He's going to be shooting this for me. Get him, Maggie! What's going on folks? TCG back at it again with another video. Today we are helping our good buddy Josh, who you've seen in other videos, shingle his chicken coop. So this is going to be a how-to video on how to shingle your chicken coop slash shed because it's pretty much the exact same thing. Right now we got Jay Goods behind the camera. Uh, Pizza Kala and Amanda are supposed to be on their way, but they don't understand time. They're on some weird time zone. I don't even know. They're going to be here probably in like two hours. But uh, yeah, so let's get to it. <laughs> These guys are going to be going in the coop today. Hopefully, once we're done the roof and a few other things, we got some more out here. Out here, we got the meat chickens, broiler chickens, whatever you want to call them. These are all the meat hens, the ones that are going to be getting eaten. Hi, right, yo. So this will be the chicken mansion, aka the chick inn. It's going to be a pretty big chicken coop. So this is everything we got here. So this chicken coop. It's getting better, it's getting done better than most new construction houses. That's for sure. So, we got some architectural shingles, 50 year, 40 year, depending on who you are. We got a deal off a guy on Kijiji. So we got just over three bundles of one collar and then like a mixed variety of the other ones because you know it's a chicken coop so who gives a shit. Get some drip edge, actual starters, and of course caps. And then it's not heated, so we're not putting ice and water shield, but we are putting synthetic paper over here. And because we got a good deal on it. Anyway, it's supposed to be four feet. Uh, the guy has it fully cut in half. It took a sawzaw or a skill saw to and cut it in half. So, folks at home, if you buy synthetic paper, it will look twice the size of this. But it, it's still going to work the exact same. It's going to take twice as long to install. I think, yeah, inch and a quarter. These are inch and a quarter hand nails. And the nails for my nail gun are the same, inch and a quarter. Uh, when I put the paper on, I like to use hand nails. I just find it much less in the way and stuff. But then uh, I'll use my gun, nail you know, gun for the uh, for the shingling part. Because it's just much quicker. And two, I find uh, so easy to have blow throughs on the paper when you use your nail gun. So what's the point? So anyways, we're putting on architectural shingles for a couple of reasons. They last longer, um, usually 40 to 50 years. You know, that's what they, the manufacturer says. Three tab is like 10 to 20 years. Uh, they're a bit more expensive, yes, but they last longer. The other good thing about them is they are dummy shingles. So y'all watching at home, this is super easy to install. It's pretty cut and paste. I mean, anybody can learn it. Three tab is a little bit trickier, especially if you've never done it before. Easy, but definitely trickier. Uh, they look different too. Uh, this is like one solid piece. I mean, this one's already broken, so it's a cut. But three tab is on the house, and architectural is going on the chicken coop. So three tab is pretty plain and simple. This is your full architectural piece. Three tab would look like this. Spaces. So. Not not as good for the wind. Just all around shittier shingle. So, when you're getting a, a deal on it anyways, you may as well use the easier stuff. All right, so first things first, guys, put your paper on. I mean, what we got here is not perfectly square. So anyways, you just put it over to the edge. What I like to do, a couple of your hand nails. Put one up here, top corner. 
roll it out about three, four feet. Make it flush on the bottom, like so. Nail here. Should have a bit more hand nails in my hand. A little rusty, you know. And then just give it some good nailing. You know, you want to make the paper not have wrinkles. So I like to slide my hammer down it. As you can see, using a drywalling hammer, it's because I'm soft and I weigh less. Now normally this is four feet, so I'll have these, this line at the top too, so you can start from any side. You, know, you can start from over there. I mean, I could have started as well, but it's not very square. Then you'll want to cut your end, your overhang off, of course. You usually need, if you're using a hook blade, it needs to be a fresh one. Nice, nice and sharp. One time use on a shingle, it won't cut your synthetic very good. Then you just keep on rolling her out, boys. Just keeps on going. Ready? Make sure she's nice and flush at the bottom there. With your plywood. You're really all banging. Every once in a while she needs a good nailing, you know. She always likes a good nailing. I like to cut the vent holes afterwards so you don't put the paper over, accidentally step on it. And like I said before, if you're using tar paper, you're gonna fucking fall right through it. Synthetic, you'll probably be fine. But I still rather do it at either cut the vent holes at the very end after it's all done shingled, or once I know what bottom shingle the vent is gonna be on. Wow, she's a little windy now. So. So we're putting the drip edge on now. And there's two, a couple ways you can do it. Or you just put it on like how I'm gonna do it because it's quicker and easier and this is a fucking chicken coop. Uh, or you could cut, make a bend and put it up the side. It tends to look nicer that way. But why am I gonna care about that on a chicken coop? Put a nail. And then the drip edge, all it does is help prevent the water from going underneath the shingles and also makes it so it will drip off the fascia and into the ease trough. Even though I don't think we're putting an ease trough on here, but that doesn't matter. All right, so then you cut your piece, the drip edge, go on the side here. I like to leave it about a quarter inch from the peak. And my reasoning for that is that a few times when I have had to go back up on a roof for a repair or something else, um, if it's been a, like a year or two later, I've noticed the cap on the end has like sunk into the drip edge. And when you're attaching your drip edge to the other one, it's easy if you just put this in there, pry it open a little bit, bring it down, tap it on. And then it's held. But once I fully drip edge, and we can start shingling. So there's a, a, a couple ways you can do this. When I'm on a job site or whatever, I just put my finger here and go to the first line in my finger, which is pretty much a quarter inch. Or you can, you know, measure whatever your starter is. So these are eight inches. So then you measure, make a line, seven inches, three quarters. At the bottom, chalk a line. And then you are using, you're using regular shingles as your starter. Just uh, 13 inches and three quarters. So you do 13 and a half. And there you would have your quarter inch overhang. So for you folks today, 
I will chuck a line. It's a lot easier when you have somebody to hold it for you like I do. Oh. Here. One issue with chalk lining though is that you can get waves in your paper after you've already set your chalk line which can move it. your finger right here. There you go. Close enough. Ah, go on. So now that I got the chalk line done, put some starters on. It's usually nice to just lay a few out as you go. You can just shingle and add it in as like a shingle. So. First things first, put this one on, that goes down. Now, the one main reason what I also do though, is I take these two, just so I know the height. When you put your first shingle on, it's a full shingle. I just farted. Uh, and your starter has its nice six inch offset. So then you put flush at the bottom, flush on the sides. There's a white line here. People, hit the white line. You know what I'm saying? Like what most of us roofers do. So depending on what brand you have, these ones here are Ico. So they make it pretty square and easy for you. So you wanna cut six to eight inches off. So what I like to do is pull my dick out. So anyways, you make your cut, you know, as long as it's more than six inches, it's usually fine. So then, this one's down here, you put it as close to flush with the edge as you can, and there's keys on the shingle that you line it up with. I'll show you that in a second, better than upside down. So one. Okay. So this is what I mean by keys. See this, it squares out here and it has a flat hard line here. Now all architectural shingles have this. So it makes it super easy, AKA dummy shingle, like I said in the beginning. You line the bottom of this up with that key and that's your straight. You do it the whole way, just like that. Some people think you go to the bottom of that white line. That is not true, that is dumb as hell. You go to here which then if you end up crooked, at least you have this much extra room to play with to get your line back to straight. Good. So then your last cut that you made for the edge, you took your six to eight inches off. You can take that piece off and look for the next one. Like that's not enough, that's about four inches there. And this is a bit too much. So then just split the difference and try to cut straight. Oh. Easily. Okay, and get to the second layer. Voila. And then down on the keys. Nail, 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 and nail. Some people like to put it here. Finally, I have to put an extra nail there if I'm going to let the shingle hang over just to make it easier to cut. Go. Six nails for a full shingle. I mean, five, you're gonna be fine. Why cheap out? Then you put your next one, butt it up to the next one on those keys I was telling you about. Straight on the keys. I put it here and then this one overlaps. Boom, tight here, flush the edge. One, 
Oh, you got the wrong ones. F off. I swear to God. Well, what the f <laughs> I meant the, the, like the ones closest to us. <laughs> Alrighty. Leave them up here now. Why, well, you can use these? I might use them on the other side. <laughs> Holy, bud. So we're on the next one after we just did our full shingle. Like again, cut it so you have your six to eight. Started going out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to let go of the shingles, grab the roof, or I would have been gone. Thank you, Ryan. Center. Six inches here. Six inches. vintage for them so a lot of time you take your roofing caulking you caulk the outside of this and you put it down I mean I barely ever do it if you want to do that that's definitely up to you but it ain't all that needed Oh yeah, another thing too is all these vents have an up. Luckily they have an arrow. Use your common sense, put the arrow upwards to the sky, the peak. Put this one here. Boom. Nail, make sure it's in here. You can see where, as long as it's over, it doesn't have to be here. Just, you know, as long as you have your Six to eight on this side. Put it up tight. Pull it out what feels like a quarter inch. Make sure. Edge, block on both sides. Now nail, and nail. Always in the car line. Now nail, now nail. Perfect height too, not touching your vent. You yeah, always want your vent pretty much as high as it can go.
Well, thank you for watching. It's been Roofing with TCG. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something. And uh, if you have any questions or concerns or think I'm doing something wrong, obviously leave a comment below because we'd love to hear from you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> hope you know how to shingle your, uh, your shed or your chicken coop now. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to smash that subscribe button because we're dropping videos every Sunday. Catch you in the next one.